Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the Meowing About Books tag. So this was an original tag created by Booktube Goddess, which is a great Booktube channel, uh, uh, drag themes channel. Uh, one of the f there's only two I know of that do that, uh, and I think it's great. It's a nice little bit of variety uh, for the community. So definitely go check out Booktube Goddess. Uh, link below to her original tag video. She didn't tag me to do this, but obviously I have a biggie, so um, I thought I should probably go ahead and do the Meowing About Books tag. So there are what? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Are there ten questions? Three, four, five, six, seven. I can't count. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think there are nine, which is good because of the whole nine lives thing. So uh, without any further ado, let's dive on in and make a start on the Meowing About Books tag. All right, so question one, catnip, an addictive book or series that you devour in one sitting. Uh, I guess my answer for this would be The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Jabosky for the simple reason that I did read it in one sitting. It was on a flight from Latvia back to the UK and uh, yeah, I read the whole thing in one go and it was very good too. There's in fact a review of it on my channel which I guess I will link to below. Question number two, litter box. A book so stinky you want to bury it in the sand. The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz of Fun. There was just so many things in it that I found really disturbing. Like we were supposed to empathize with the main character even though he snuck into the house of the girl that he fancied, found her in bed with her boyfriend and then got really arsy about it as though she'd done something to personally offend him. That was weird. And then his dad was like, oh, don't worry, you'll be able to break them up fine. Yeah, bury that. Don't, we don't want it. Question number three, Scratching Post. A non-fiction book you keep going back to in order to sharpen your mind or your claws. So for that, I guess I will go for uh, The Lives of the Stoics by Ryan Halliday and Stephen something or other. Uh, it's a recent non-fiction book that I, I read. Uh, I will link below to my full review of that as well. And actually, we're going to be doing a video on Stoicism on um, Lord Literature and Madam Media, which is the joint channel I have with Susie, my uh, girlfriend. And so, link below for that as well. So that's kind of why I keep going back to this book, is to, um, to take notes for this video that we're going to do. But also, I mean, it's about Stoic philosophy and how you can apply that to your life. So it is very literally about um, helping you to sharpen your mind. Question number four, a sh mouse, a short book or short story that you like to play with and then devour. For this, I think I'm gonna go with uh, Only You Can Save Mankind by Terry Pratchett. It's not super short. Um, it's I would say it's like, I guess, middle grade as opposed to like, it's, it's certainly aimed at an earlier audience than his uh, Discworld books, I think. Um, so I listened to it on audio a couple of weeks ago and I did it in just over, you know, just within a day. Uh, I think it was four hours, 20 minutes in total. And uh, yeah, I liked, it. I liked it a lot. Question number five, Hairball. A book that you liked on the first read, but after the passage of time, you find it makes you want to throw up. Ah, I have the opposite, like books that made me want to throw up at first, but that now I, I can tolerate. I can't think of a single one like this, to be honest. Um, books tend to go up and down a little bit in my estimation, especially with a reread, but none's ever gone from being one that I like to one that makes me want to throw up. Question number six, I think. Attitude. A main character that has the attitude of a cat. I would have to say like Bilbo Baggins, uh, right at the start of The Hobbit, or any Hobbit really with their, you know, typical Hobbit life of eating and sleeping and putting the hairy feet up. Question and number seven, perfect. A book or series that is so perfect that you can't find any flaws at all. I haven't got one for that really. I mean, there's flaws in anything if you look hard enough. Uh, I'll just give my standard answer of the His Dark Materials trilogy because it's the book that got me into reading. That's why I got this this sweet uh, Panzer Bjorn on my, on my arm. But um, it still definitely has flaws. It's just, I can overlook those flaws, you know? I don't think any book is perfect. Nothing's perfect in this world. Question number eight, Hiss. Your favorite horror or scary book? I mean, it's very difficult to pick just one. I guess we'll go with The Stand by Stephen King because I would probably say The Stand is my favorite Stephen King book. And obviously he's the master of horror. Uh, and I guess it's particularly scary at the moment with what's happening in the world around us, you know? Um, yeah, crazy stuff. It, it, it also is definitely at least an influence on my novel Meat. And question number nine, Nine Lives. A series or author you liked, then was dead to you, but then you liked again. I mean, again, I, I guess I'm not that fickle with my, 
my, my tastes, um, I can't imagine a book going from being, you know, I can't imagine an author going from an author I like to one who's, been, who's dead to me. Uh, I think that's a bit extreme. The closest I can think of to this, no, I, I honestly, I can't think of one for this. Um, I, I'm going to say Philip Pullman because, again, he wrote this series of books that I really loved. He also wrote the Sally Lockhart books, which I really loved. Um, and then I just didn't much like the Book of Dust. Um, I haven't actually read the second one of those new releases, but I just think the story was better where it was and should have been left. You know, he should have focused on creating something new. Um, but I wouldn't say that I necessarily like him again. It's just that Pullman I used to really love and he was up here, you know, and now he's sort of just pottering along down here. But he's not dead to me. He never was dead to me. But I don't like him as much as I used to, so I don't know. So yeah, there we have it. That is the meowing about books tag. I'm going to tag a few people to take this, so I'm going to tag cats and camera, of course. I'll tag uh, Claudia from Spinster's Library. Basically, everyone who's got cats. Todd the Librarian, he doesn't have a cat, but he likes to do tags. I will do uh, The Archive, Graham over at The Archive. I'll do uh, Nick at Spooky Noodles. So there we have it, that's my take on the meowing about books tag. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. I guess you can't tell me what you think of these books, because, well, you, I suppose you can. Uh, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.